not over yet. You know, my first race went into the night, and we won that. And my second race was the same way. I mean, we're, we're kind of used to this. Don't give up, and we'll keep it up. We're going to win it. There's Rick Sanko late into the night last night fighting for his political survival in this hour in southwestern PA. And here is what you have. Democrat Connor Lamb holds a narrow lead. RNC spokeswoman Kaylee McEnany is here to talk about this. Kaylee, how you doing? And good morning to you there. And doing great. Washington. A lot, lot to analyze here. The Democrat is saying that the results had nothing to do with Donald Trump. He's making a case that this was a local matter. What do you think about that argument? That's right. Uh, Connor Lamb ran as a Republican. He said, I'm not running against Trump, but I am running against Nancy Pelosi. How extraordinary is that? A Democrat running against his own soon-to-be Democratic leadership if he wins. He said he was pro-gun. He said he was pro-coal. Uh, he said he was personally pro-life. He was a Republican in name, but I can promise you he will vote like a Democrat in Congress. So Rick Saccone was selling the same message. And, yeah, Rick and this thing is a dead heat. Why? That's right. Because of the pro-union aspect, I think, of Connor Lamb. He was very pro-union. This is a union-heavy district. Uh, so you had a Republican in name versus a Republican in truth. But, you know, Bill, I want to caution extrapolating any national consensus from this of what the midterms will look like. Because Connor Lamb, really important to point this out, he did not run in a primary. He was appointed by local committee men in a vote uh, at the local level, not among, of, among voters. There was no primary challenge from the left. You look across the country, moderate Democrats are being run out by their voters. You look at Dianne Feinstein not even getting the endorsement of her party. Dan Lipinski, Illinois congressman who is within two points of being beat by a progressive challenger. State of Georgia, the moderate candidate, has not received one national endorsement because moderate Democrats are not what the, Dem what the Democratic voters so want. So you're arguing if he had a primary opponent, he would not have been the candidate? Yes, I argue that if he had a primary opponent, someone from the progressive left, someone endorsed by our revolution, Bernie Sanders, he likely would not have been the candidate. It would have looked more like Texas, where you look at those primaries and you see runoffs between progressives like Bernie Sanders and establishment types like Hillary Clinton, endorsed and backed by the DCCC. Well, you mentioned unions, too. John Kaser was on TV yesterday. He grew up in this area, as you know, governor of Ohio. Um, but, but he was making the case that the unions are back. They've woken up, and they took an active role in this campaign. And he, he may have a fair point there, but Republicans spent 10 or $11 million in this district. Yep, we spent a lot. There's no doubt about it because we're playing for every seat. And, you know, our chairwoman constantly says, we realize the fight we're up against. If history holds, you look at history and, and the midterm elections after a new presidency are very tough for the sitting party in power. But as Chairwoman McDaniel says, we want to defy history. And we believe that we can because of our secret weapon, President Trump. This race had a six-point gap last week. Now it's within a few hundred votes. And that's because our closer came in, and that's yeah. President Trump. But he, here's the point on that. If you pump Pump $11 million into this campaign in, in an area that President Trump won by 20 points just 18 months ago, and now you're fighting to a draw. I mean, that, that, that's a steep drop, Kaylee, from just uh, a year and a half ago. Right. Well, our Democratic counterparts pump millions in as well. But here's the national picture. This is one race. This is one special election. When we look nationally, Bill, and the amount of money we have at, at the RNC, double that of our Democratic counterparts, five times cash on hand advantage, we have the money to play this way in races across the country and create a ground game like we've never seen before. Our Democratic counterparts, they're broke. They don't have the ability to play at this level in races across the country. And they will not prevail in the midterms at that rate. All right, last point here then, and you were making this point too. Connor Lamb sold himself as pro-gun, anti-tariff, pro-life, even though he would not vote that way. Um, is there a blueprint for Democrats come November to run similar campaigns like him? Or are you making the case that this is entirely unique to southwestern PA? This is unique to southwestern PA. And even though, you know, he adopted pro-Trump talking points, and that will prevail, that could prevail across the nation, the point is you look at the Democratic bench, and the Connor Lambs of the world are a dying breed, if not extinct. Moderate Democrats are being run out of Congress. The blue dog dim does not exist. And at the primary level, you don't have a bunch of Connor Lambs. You have a bunch of Bernie Sanders. And that will not win at the national level and will not win in the midterm. Right, it's going to be very interesting. Okay, then, McEnany, come on back, okay, from the RNC in Washington today. Um, immediate reaction, we can call it, from the race last night that continues now. Thank you very much for your time Thanks, today. Phil.